The 15th Australian Space Forum, James Webb snaps an asteroid belt, China's mysterious space plane and Virgin Galactic announces it's getting back into flying. This is Trek Zone's Talk and Science. This is the podcast where you get the science and space headlines now. We're coming to you from the 15th Australian Space Forum, presented by the Dr. Andy Thomas Space Foundation. Now, according to the foundation, the forum is supported by the Australian Space Agency, the South Australian Space Industry Centre and SmartSat CRC, and aims to provide the perfect opportunity to stimulate ideas, share information about emerging technologies and network with influential space sector leaders and the broader community. The 15th Australian Space Forum will highlight two key themes, space cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region with significant representation from the Japanese Space Agency and an update on Australia's space capabilities. For more on the forum, I'm joined by the chair of the Dr. Andy Thomas Space Foundation, Michael Davis. Michael, finally made it uh, in person uh, to the Space Forum. It's uh, it's a great thrill to be here. South Australia, even, you know, I've been trying for four, uh, four times now to, to get down to the to the forum. But everything has been going from strength to strength. Uh, so it's it's still an incredible time to uh, to check out everything that's going on here. Yes, it's, it's amazing. We've uh, just reached our target of 1,000 delegates again. The, this forum and uh, we've made the big announcement that um, uh, every second forum will be in another city and we've already we're already uh, committed to Sydney on the 6th of December so that will be a big new adventure and challenge for us but we're looking forward to it. So 15 conventions now and uh, 16th moving to another city what spurred the uh, what spurred that decision on? Um, the, the, the need to be seen to be a national foundation, which we are, we always were, um, and um, the uh, feedback we've had from um, our many interstate visitors who enjoy coming to Adelaide, but uh, have often suggested that we should uh, do it in other states. And uh, I think also that the fact that space is a very national distributed, geographically distributed activity in this country and each state and territory has its own capability and so we need to be seen to having that national footprint. So this is our first venture and once a year we'll, we'll choose a different city. What feedback are you receiving from exhibitors, from vendors uh, about uh, the nature of this forum? Uh, about the, the nature of this forum? Um, this forum um, has a particular focus on international cooperation. You probably heard the presentations this morning um, and that it's been really well received and we were blown away by the support we got especially from the Japanese Space Agency who who's spent a uh, who sent a, a big delegation of very senior people including the the head of the agency and the deputy head um, so th this has sort of um, taught us that um, we need to focus on uh, what's happening in our region and, and what's happening in our uh, spacefaring partners in the rest of the world. And uh, so today we're really pleased with uh, the content that we've, we've been able to uh, produce. Deputy Premier, thanks for a little bit of your time. Fantastic to be here with you. Now, tell us a little bit about the Space Forum, uh, the space industry in general uh, for South Australia, a big, big boon for business. Well, we like to say that South Australia is the gravitational centre of space for Australia. Brilliant. But the truth is that while we are very strong, the rest of Australia is also really interested in space and space technology and industry and what we can learn about our planet from space. Uh, so this is the 15th Australian Space Forum. Until now, we've had them here twice a year in South Australia. We're now going to share that a little bit so that we'll continue to have a space, Australian Space Forum once a year in South Australia, but the alternate six-monthly one will occur somewhere around Australia so that we can share it around a little bit better. The first one is going to Sydney. Have you spoken with the New South Wales Premier at all or your compadre down uh, over there? No, I haven't yet met the New South Wales Premier, the one who's just come into the into government, but I know that the International Space Conference is going to be held in Sydney in a couple of years' time. 
We had it in 2017 and it was an extraordinary moment for South Australia, really gaining a lot of support in the general public and a lot of recognition for people who understand space that South Australia was serious about space. I was in Paris at the same international conference just last year when they decided that Sydney would be the next location that they were choosing and I'm really pleased for Sydney but it doesn't stop South Australia being the gravitational centre. Exactly right. You are Australian, but of course you are South Australian. <laughs> exactly. Now, you're also the, uh, the Minister for Science as well. So what, is, what does it mean to have the whole industry deciding that, a, that Adelaide is going to be home? Well, let's, let's uh, understand why space matters so much. Space is about very high complexity, sophistication, and it's, it has exactly the kind of economy that we want to see in South Australia. It means taking advanced research, advanced science, and applying it and commercialising. So having a space industry shows all other parts of industry what can be done to have a more sophisticated and complex economy, and to really lean on the quality of research that we have right here. So space is important because of the work it does, and also as an exemplar of other changes we would like to see across the business community. The other thing that space does, which is so important, is it encourages young people to study STEM. So lots of little kids, when they're thinking about what they'd like to do, are super enthused about dinosaurs, about robots, and about space. And if we can make sure that they can see a pathway to that being a part of their future, then they're much more likely to keep studying the STEM subjects that we need all of our kids to do a lot better at. So we love space because it does really good work, because it adds sophistication to our economy and drives that across the rest of the sector, and also because it provides an example for young people to study the subjects that we know really, really matter. Maths, engineering, technology. Turning to the week's other news, and new observations by the James Webb Space Telescope reveal a more complex asteroid belt outside our solar system than expected. The young hot star, Formal Hort, was the target of study. Its ring system consists of three nested belts that extend out for around 23 million kilometres, and it's more complex than either our Kuiper or main asteroid belts. The dusty structure was first discovered in 1983 using NASA's infrared astronomical satellite but it's only with this direct image from James Webb that we get a clearer picture of what's going on 25 light years away. It's postulated that the dust belts are the result of collisions between asteroids and or comets, making them different to protoplanetary disks which form in the early phase of the solar system. After 276 days in orbit on its second flight, China's mysterious space plane has returned to Earth. The reusable robotic vehicle touched down on May 8 at the Zhuquan Satellite Launch Centre in northwest China, ending months of curious activities, including injecting something into orbit at the end of October. Theories abound at the time about what that was, with some positing that it was a small satellite designed to monitor the craft as it continued its orbits of the planet. This is a 274-day increase on the first flight back in September 2020, and it's believed to be a similar in size to the US Space Force's X-37B. That craft has flown six orbital missions with the longest duration at 909 days. Virgin Galactic is aiming to fly to space for the first time in two years later this month. The Richard Branson-led company announced this week that its fifth space flight will be carried out by Unity 25. And while this will be the fifth test flight, it is expected to be the final. Virgin Galactic grounded both the carrier VMS EVE and the plane VSS Unity following Branson's flight in 2021 for upgrades and maintenance, with the critical pylon being replaced. This will be the 25th flight of any type for the craft, taking off from Spaceport America in New Mexico, boosted to 50,000 feet by VMS EVE. The Tropics CubeSats are on their way from New Zealand. These are the first two satellites in NASA's new hurricane hunting constellation and have been deployed in low Earth orbit around 550 kilometres above Earth. The time resolved observations of precipitation structure and storm intensity with a constellation of small sats will consist of four satellites in total when the next pair launch in around a fortnight. This is a critical mission step with the work of Tropics only able to proceed if all four are launched 
launched in a 60-day period. Will McCarty, a researcher for the Tropics program at NASA's Earth Science Division, has called this mission an innovative leap to augment much heftier weather-focused satellites. Originally slated to launch from Rocket Lab's Virginia spaceport, they were shifted to New Zealand to take advantage of an earlier launch window, enabling scientists to activate the program ahead of the 2023 hurricane season later in May. An international team of astronomers believe they have observed what appears to be a planet being swallowed up by its host star. The team reported observations of a 10-day long optical outburst in the galactic disk accompanied by bright and long-lived infrared emissions that slowly faded over the course of around six months. The international research team says that based on their observations, it appears that a planet approximately 10 times bigger than Jupiter was consumed by the star. A similar fate of which will probably probably be full the Earth, though not for another five billion years, when the sun is expected to burn out and eat up the solar system's inner planets. Well, coming up on the next Talk and Science interview, right here at the 15th Australian Space Forum, going to be heading around this exhibition hall, bringing you all the latest from the keynote speeches, the panel discussions as well. Plenty to look out for. Jump on to the trek.zone slash TSIV052. Plenty more of that exciting stuff to come. Look out for all of that as we continue to bring you the best stuff from here at the Australian Space Forum. We are podcasting on YouTube and across every podcast app. Find each of Trek Zone's shows on Google or Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Tuned In and more. Plus, Trek Zone's channel in the iTunes library gives you a one-stop shop for all of our goodness. So jump onto your favourite podcast app, find Trek Zone and subscribe. On YouTube too, membership still available for less than a cup of coffee a month. Get early access for a little bit more, $15 a month. Jump behind the scenes of our next Star Trek fan film. And also events like this as well, getting first and exclusive access to our members on YouTube. Look out for all of that, Trek Zone's podcast offering. We're on social media as well with Star Trek episodes and podcast highlights. I'm Matt Miller from the 15th Australian Space Forum. This is Talking Science. I'll catch you in the comments. Let's chat about the stories today and also the great startups that are happening all around us.